well, this is my other playroom. You can see a few stickers on the door there uh, from various places, but it's a Vincent room once again. Please go in. This is the clean room, of course. <laughs> There's a Vincent engine to welcome you. There's a few trophies around here. You better take us around in a minute, John, and just show us what's what. Oh, this uh, is a doorstop, as one of my friends called them. <laughs> uh, very suitable doorstop, but it's actually a, a Vincent engine with a gearbox chopped off uh, because it was in a, a sprinting outfit, and it is in fact a supercharged engine. <coughs> um, with belt the, drive. The belt drive uh, to the epicyclic two-speed gearbox and the multi-V drive to the supercharger. Another door stop. So what's but that? Just a set of crankcases? It's just a set of uh, HRD crankcases, but of course they're much sought after nowadays, these, these things, and, uh, and a mint set of uh, original crankcases is much more valuable than a brand new set. Alright, okay, come and have a look at this. It's m maybe of more interest. Um, this, is, uh, this is a Koenig-powered outfit that I built in the 70s, and... Uh, most modern, all of the modern machines are based on this because it was the first machine uh, with a hub steering system that worked, wishbones and uh, all QD wheels, racing car fashion. And from this machine, all modern sidecar racing machines have evolved. Right, and what's the net here for, John? Oh, the, the net, oh, that's to catch the ping pong balls. <laughs> Because this is also our exercise room. So Marilyn and I play ping pong most days. And that's what and keeps you slim and fit. Keeps me, keeps me lovely, yeah. <laughs> I haven't always been this good looking. It's the, so it's the so what's that you've done. got there then, John? Uh, this is a standard Vincent Black Shadow. Um, I sadly sold my original Vincent Black Shadow uh, and it actually left here on the same day as the Twin Towers fell in New York. <laughs> two disasters in one day <laughs> but uh, fortunately I bought another one shortly afterwards just, and, to, just to keep you keep, keep you sane yeah, that's right and, uh, uh, and that was a good thing uh, but I haven't ridden it much but the plan is to have a little trundle and there's a few of the old trophies from racing here there and everywhere the most recent of them being uh, the trophies from the Bub Speed Trials and that was the one last, that one uh, uh, that was the trophy for the fastest sidecar streamliner um, in 2011. And there's some great big cups the here. The great big trophy is uh, the Harry Mack trophy, which I won this year. It was awarded by the VMCC for the most meritorious performance with a, with a sidecar outfit. And uh, it was for my winning of the Brighton Speed Trials, basically. Right. And you've had some here. And this one was awarded to you how many times? Oh, this one. I won this four times, in fact. Uh, it's the Classic Sprint Championship, overall champion. That was uh, against all comers, solos and sidecars. And so they and gave was, you the cup? So they finally they gave me the cup, yes, because I was fed up with giving me these little ones. <laughs> um, anyway. It's quite a collection. Well, one or two, yes, there we are. So where's the best thing hidden away then, John? The best thing? I don't know what's the best thing, really. It's a... Uh, uh, no, your, your best bike you've got hidden away. Best bike? Oh, my best bike. Well, by far my best bike, I think, is Prometheus. And this is where the, the name sequence began. This is Prometheus, my road racing outfit. Uh, this has won races on most of the British circuits. This was last raced at uh, Mallory Park in 1999, uh, when Peter Branton and I, Peter in the chair... Uh, we won the race there. So its last outing was a winning outing. And how old were you then? Um, 59. Right. Yeah, OK. And still a winner? Just a boy, yes. Still a winner, yes. Oh, yeah, still winning then. Um, but it got... Uh, uh, I went sprinting with it then as a gentle outlet rather than the rigours of road racing and... Uh, it wasn't fully competitive as a sprinter, so that's when I built Epimetheus. Epimetheus being the brother of Prometheus. The sprinter. Uh, yeah, and so, so brother Epi is the sprinter. 
but this is the boy who started it all. This is a, a relatively small motor, it's only 1300cc, running on petrol of course, normally aspirated, gives just about 100 horsepower. And a solid rear end? Solid rear end, all that's necessary for the smooth roadway circuits. Rear suspension has no merit in that situation. But of course we have a heavily modified front system. Um, well more, more or less Vincent, but uh, with a heavily modified geometry giving a much steeper steering head angle and very gentle uh, trail, making it feather light to steer. It and steers very well. And big disc brakes. Yeah, two disc brakes. They're vitally necessary to stop all this lot. So none of the old twin Vincent drums anymore? Mm, we did for a while, but it was hard going. <laughs> I had a grip like Tarzan at that time. but I made twin leading shoe uh, version of it, but the, uh, uh, the Wingers complained about my twin leading shoe, said it was uh, not eligible. Oh. And, and uh, it took me some time for them to accept the twin leading shoes. And then a little while after that, they changed the cutoff date completely and we were allowed to use disc brakes. Right. So it was a nonsense, all that. And then the fuel tank down on the side. The fuel tank's on the floor and it's pumped up. This is just a cover. Fiberglass. Made to look right. very Vincent like, of course. So, uh, when are we going to get it out on the road again, John? Oh, when you're brave enough to have a go on it. <laughs> now, this is a, an article from the Motorcycle News in 1974 of the Centre Hub Rennick outfit. Can you tell us about it, John? Yes. Fundamentally, uh, it's a, the basic chassis is a single four-inch tube that runs down the side of the, of the motor, onto which is hung a set of wishbones and hub centre steering system at the front, and a swinging arm system at the back, and then a, another single tube across to the sidecar wheel, which in some applications carried oil, and that was it. It was as simple as it could be. And the Koenig motor being a four-cylinder, two-stroke, horizontally opposed engine, uh, with a total height of only about six inches, sat down on a flat tray uh, over which the, the, the rider was prone. But of course the overall centre of gravity of the whole scheme was very, very low. And therefore, sidecar passengering, as we previously knew it, became obsolete because he was more or less stationary in the sidecar, keeping it nicely uh, unupset. And did it win anything? It, it won. Jerry was British champion. And uh, it was the first outfit to produce a, a result in the Isle of Man when Jerry was third in the TT, first time out in 1972. So and it was pretty good at life. Indeed. It. Then everybody wanted one, and I made them for all sorts of people, including George O'Dell, who was world champion. And this is a very early outfit. This is from when? This is 1962. That's 1962. That's m myself driving and my brother Tom in the sidecar. Uh, that was my first season of racing in 1962, when I was British Motorcycle Racing Club champion, first year. Full, full drift there? Full drift, that picture was taken uh, on full song in Top Gear at Maggot's Curve, Silverstone. <laughs> so that was uh, great fun. So tell me John, you've had some fun over the years. I certainly have, we've had great fun, lots of pain, uh, disappointment, but when the highs are high, it's the greatest thing ever.